Good morning, Saints. Good morning. Welcome to Saturday Bible Study on faith. Faith. I'm going to set this timer because if I don't, uh, I'll forget. Amen. Let us pray, Father. Thank you for these opportunities you give us to come to proclaim your word. Uh, we ask that you will give us all utterance and all understanding. Open the eyes of the ones that are blind. Unblind their mind, unblind their eyes. Un you know, take that stony heart out of them and put a heart of flesh in them and renew their spirit within them. We thank you, Lord, because we know that if we ask according to your will, it will happen. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. We're going to pick up on confidence. I noticed last week that is a subject that a lot of people don't know about. They're not confident in what God has said. Confidence is another word for faith. So if they don't have confidence, they don't have faith either. That's true. That is it's, it's true. You, you can't have one without the other. Let's start with Hebrews 11.1. Uh, um, now, faith is the assurance, title, title the confirmation of things hoped for, divinely guaranteed. And the evidence of things not seen, the conviction of their reality. Faith comprehends as fact what cannot be experienced by the physical senses. Amen. That's true. Faith is a spiritual force in, that Amen. is inside of you. you. It was given to you a measure of faith when you got born again. Uh, Hebrews 10, 35. Do not therefore fling away your fearless confidence, for it has a glorious and great reward. When I was first became a Christian, I used to read that verse, and I really didn't have an idea of what God was talking about. But I know it was true because it was in his word. So I didn't really know what confidence was about. But now that I have become spiritually matured, I know confidence is faith. Faith in God. 36. For you do not have, for you have need of patience endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromising we have found out that if we compromise why in this building trying to get along with different other ministries in this building it don't work and that's exactly what he's saying here for you have need of patient endurance to bear up under difficult circumstances without compromise. Right. He wants us to, you know, do it without compromise. Be strong. Right. Be so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the fullest what is promised. Amen. For yet in a little while, he who is coming will come and will not carry. But my righteous one, the one justified by faith, shall live by faith. Amen. Representing, respecting man's relationship to God and trusting him. Amen. And if he draws back, shrinking in fear, my soul has no delight in him. You don't want us to shrink back or draw back in fear. 
and i don't really know when i was talking to the different ministries in this building whether it was fear or slight dread or just that we wanted to get our voice heard clearly in our recordings but what i have found out that they have a a noise that can uh you know take the noise out of the video so that what we're saying you can hear what we're saying real clearly and you can hear some of the background noise but not as much Amen. with that filter on there so I, I like how he says uh, when we shrink back and fear you know you don't have no the light and our main goal is we want to delight the lord and please god and everything we do and say so mm -hmm. that gives us strength and encouragement not to do it because we don't want to do anything that would please our father well, what, what we want to do is do His will. Amen. That's the only way to please Him. Because it says in that 36th verse, so that when you have carried out the will of God, you may receive and enjoy to the full what is promised. Amen. And when, last week we stopped there about the will of God. A lot of people do not know what the will of God is, and a lot of people do know what the will of God is. Um, but we do know that faith and confidence we must have in God. Just like our father Abraham. Go with me to Participation here this morning. Romans uh, 16 to 21. Could you read that, please? Yes. Therefore, inheriting the promise depends entirely on faith. That is, confident trust in the unseen God, in order that it may be given as an act of grace, his unmerited favor and mercy so that the promise will be legally guaranteed to all the descendants of Abraham, not only for those Jewish believers who keep the law, but also for those Gentile believers who share the faith of Abraham, who is the spiritual father of us all. As it is written in the scripture, I have made you a father of many nations, 
and the sight of him in whom you believe, that is God, who gives life to the dead and calls him to be in that which does not exist. And hope against hope, Abraham believed that he would become a father of many nations, as he had been promised by God. So numberless shall your descendants be. Without becoming weak in faith, he considered his own body now as good as dead for producing children, since he was about a hundred years old. And he considered the deadness of Sarah's womb. But he did not doubt or waver in unbelief concerning the promise of God. But he grew strong and hard by faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced that God had the power to do what he had promised. Amen. Fully convinced. That's confidence. Being fully persuaded, yeah. fully convinced. You're sure right. what God said in his word is his will. He didn't doubt him, he didn't waver. And when you waver from that, that's not good for you. That's shrinking away like you that's, that's shrinking away in fear. In fear. A lot of times we do things in fear because of we say, well, if I believe that, I'm going to offend somebody. That's compromising. Compromise. He don't want you to compromise. Give it in. He don't want you to do that. No, he don't. What he wants us to do is to both be fully persuaded mm -hmm. about the will of God, mm -hmm. about his will. And we looked at Romans 12, 2, and it tells us. Romans 12, 2. Romans 12, 2. Mm -hmm. It says, And do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Stop right there. Mm -hmm. Superficial. He don't want us to do what the world is doing no, and conforming to it. Right. Go ahead. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes, so that you may prove for yourselves what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. That's how you find out the will of God, by the word of God. Amen. Not by what the world is saying. No, because it's superficial. Not by what the world is saying does not prove that that's the will of God. A lot of people say it may not be, no, they'll say it must not be God's will for everybody to be healed. And, I, and when you ask them, why, why do you think that? Because everybody don't get healed. Well, you could say, it must not be God's will for everybody to be saved. Why do you say that? Because everybody's not saved. That don't prove nothing. That proves that they chose not to believe what God said. Because he said he is not willing that any should perish. He has in his word that he's extraordinarily patient because he don't want any of us. Go to Second Peter, the third chapter. Here's our, our here's the problem. Second Peter, the third chapter. Second Peter, the third chapter. And he said that the fifth verse. Oh, you said third Peter. I mean, Second Peter, I mean, third chapter, the fifth verse. Okay. In the King James it says, For this they willingly are ignorant of. Willingly are ignorant of. 
the Amplified says, for they willingly forget the fact that the heavens existed long ago by the word of God, and the earth was formed out of the water and by the water. A lot of people willingly are in, want to be ignorant. They know it's God's will for them to be saved, and they know it's God's will for them to be healed. But one thing that I know, that your words have more power on earth than anybody else's words, even what God is saying. Because your words can be stopped against what God is saying, and nothing will happen. Right, because they believe in what they say. If he's saying it's his will for you to be healed, and you're saying it's not his will well, for me to be healed, right, you may be saying my mama had right, that God has put this sickness on me yeah. to, to show me something, mm -hmm. that's ignorant. Just slow me down. God don't put sickness on anybody. Sickness comes from the devil. And God don't need to put sickness on you to show you anything. Because once you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. 24-7. Talking to you. But what we do, we quench the Holy Spirit. We say, no, I'm not going to do what you said. Do Holy Spirit. I'm going to do what I want to do. Because I don't feel like Go with me to 1 John. You're in that area there. 1 John, the second chapter. Amen. Verses 15 to 20. Do not love the world. <laughs> of sin that opposes God and his precepts, nor the things that are in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust and the sensual craving of the flesh, and the lust and the longing of eyes, and the boastful pride of life, pretentious confidence in one's resources, or in the stability of earthly things, these do not come from the Father, but are from the world. The world is passing away, and with its lusts, the shameful priests, pursuits, and the ungodly longings. But the one who does the will of God and carries out his purposes live forever. Children. It is the last hour of the end of this age. And just as you heard the doctrine, Antichrist is coming, the one who will oppose Christ and attempt to replace him. Even now, many Antichrist's false teachers are have appeared, which confirms our belief that it is the last hour. They went out from a seeming at first to be Christians, but they were not really of us because they were not truly born again and spiritually transformed. For if they had been of us, they would have remained with us. But they went out teaching false doctrine so that it would be clearly shown that none of us, that none of them are of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One. You have been set apart, specially gifted, and prepared by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our mind, and guards us from error. Amen. So that 21st, but you have an anointing Amen. from the Holy One. You have been set apart specially gifted and prepared Amen. by the Holy Spirit. And all of you know 
the truth because he teaches us, illuminates our mind, Amen. and guards us from error. Amen. That's how you can know if you're in the will of God. That's right. He will let you know that Holy Spirit. No, you know, you can be and doing something wrong. You can be doing something wrong and the Holy Spirit is right there saying, Stop. <laughs> what are you doing? First John, the fifth chapter. We're talking about we gotta know the will of God and confidence in it. Confidence in knowing the will of God. You know, a lot of times people say, pray for me. You've been sick for a long time. Can you pray for me? And your spirit might say, ask them, do you believe it's the will of God for you to be healed? Amen. And if they say, well, I don't know. I hope it is. They're not ready really to be prayed for to be healed. Because they don't have confidence in the word of God that it is their will for them to be healed. Right. So nothing's going to happen. And you don't know if they try like the man that was about a fool. He was, had been sick for 38 years. He said he had nobody to put him yeah, in. Right, nobody to put him in. But he was well because he was there all the time. Right. Okay, 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it says... This is the remarkable degree of confidence which we as believers are entitled to have before him that if we ask anything according to his will, that is consistent with his plan and purpose, he hears us. And if we know for a fact as indeed we do, that he hears and listens to us in whatever we ask, we also know with settled and absolute knowledge that we have granted to us the request which we have asked from him. We're fully persuaded. We're sure. That if we ask him for something, he's going to give it to us. I, I have asked him for many things. And you know, even though a lot of things are not the will of God for us in our life, if we keep asking and we keep seeking and we keep knocking, Amen. he'll say, go ahead and get it. Go ahead. You can have it. And then what you find out on down the line that wasn't his will, his best will for your life. Amen. That's what you wanted. That's what you were suffering for. He, he wanted to give you something better. something better. Amen. Like I said, we stopped last week. A lot of people, you know, pray, not my will, but your will be done. And that really stirred up something in class. Um, our sister's not here today, but she will be here tomorrow. It's always good to have somebody in your classroom that asks some hard questions that a lot of people, they're doing the same thing, but they can't ask you the question. Me, I, when I got into the ministry years ago, I used to pray like that. Not my will, but your will be done. I, at the end of every prayer, I prayed. Because I didn't know what the will of God was in a lot of situations. And plus, I was trained by the elders to pray that way. Not your will. Not my will, but your will be done. But the more I became spiritually matured, I found out that was a faithless prayer. It's faithless because when I pray to God about something that I need or want, I just go ahead and say it because He can read. He knows me. His words say He know every thought and He you knows everything about everything you coming. About me, so I felt like I would be lying as when I'm praying, saying if it be 
your will. He knew that I was really, he already know what you really doing. And you can't um, pray to God and, and just say anything. You got to say the truth. Well, I hear people saying, like, what happened last week. Yeah, say the truth in your prayers. Jesus prayed like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, he did. Let's take a look at that. Uh, Luke, the 22nd chapter. Yeah, but Jesus did pray that prayer. Yeah, he did. But can you not blame him for praying like that? Well, let's take a look at it because a lot of times we're, we snatch stuff out of context. Yeah, miss and if, when you Luke, the 22nd chapter, and I want to start at verse 39, we know that. 22nd. The 22nd chapter of Luke. Yeah, because it is 24 chapters in here. And we're going to start at verse 39. That's a long one. This is when uh, he was in the garden. Jesus was in the garden mm -hmm. and he was praying. Amen? Mm -hmm. He was really praying. Too. But before that 39th verse, He says in the 36th verse, Then he said to them, But now he who has a money belt is to take it alone, and also his provision bag, and he who has no, has no sword is to sell his coat and buy one. For I tell you that this scripture which is written must be a completed and fulfilled in me. And he was counted with the criminals for that which refers to me was has, has its fulfillment in itself. Then he said, Lord, look, here are two swords. And he said to them, it is enough. This is Peter had that sword. Yeah, he had a sword on him. You know, he, was, he was still real fearful. A lot of people carry weapons. Yeah, weapon. They have a knife, they have a, a gun or whatever. They, and You know, it's because of fear. I used to carry a knife and a gun. Right, so we're going to start at this 39th verse, and let's see what's, what's really going on when Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Let's see what Jesus is doing here. Why is he praying this? Start at verse 39 and read to 46. And he came out and went as was his habit. To Mount of Olives, so it was a habit he went to all the time. Mm -hmm. And the disciples followed him. And when he arrived at the place called Gethsemane, Gethsemane, he said to them, Pray continually that you may not fall into temptation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he withdrew from them a, fell a stone's throw. And knelt down and prayed. He here he was just pressing it on. Mm -hmm. That's how far he was away from him. Amen. Saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup, this divine wrath from me. Yet not my will, but always yours be done. Now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony and deeply distressed and anguish, almost to the point of death, he prayed more intensely. And his sweat became like drops of blood falling down on the ground. Mm -hmm. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not fall into temptation. Jesus was praying an intercessory prayer here. Yes, he was. 
because he knew what was going to happen. Right. He was going to be spit on, beat, crown of thorns put on his head, mm -hmm. and pushed down. Mm -hmm. He was going to carry that cross. He was going to be hung on that cross, mm -hmm. crucified. He was going to become a substitute for us, for all of our sins. Yes. He became a substitute for our healing, mm -hmm. for our peace, all that was laid on him. And he was saying, not my will, right. but your will be done. That was an intercessory prayer. Right. And he took all that on himself, but at the same time, he knew that God was going to have to turn away from him. And that's why when he was on the cross, he was saying, Abba, Abba. Well, it says here, too, God don't like seeing. now an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening, strengthening him. Strengthening him to build him up. So when he was saying, he felt like he was not my will, mm -hmm. but your will be done, yeah, your will. that was because he really didn't want to go through all that. No. He was a man in here on earth. earth. He was in the flesh. And what we have did, we have taken that one scripture and used it for every prayer we pray, right. which is wrong. Right. Now, if you're praying an intercessory prayer mm -hmm. for yourself, right. that you've been tempted to do something, right. then you can say, not my will, right. but your will be done. Because Jesus didn't pray like that all the time. And he, and he told us how to pray in John anyway. Amen. Ask and you know, you know, when we don't know what the will of God is, we we don't really know how to pray to God. Because if we're begging him to heal our mother or heal our kids or to save our save somebody in our family, that is not a prayer that we should be praying. Because the will of God is for that no one will perish. Sure it is. In no any one. way. No one. So that's why God can't answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. Because we're praying out of the flesh. Right. Not out of according to what God has said. Yeah, right. Some people don't know how to pray. So God, so, so God do answer their prayers because He answers. You know where they are. He knows where like, their heart is. You know, the all need to understand so much. That's right. Right. So, he, so when you learn right. more about the scripture, He does. He does expect His children to pray like He wants you to. Well, we do so know. I'm right. saying right. those who right. don't, don't. You were right. And they right. do pray. Mm -hmm. Their prayers do get answered. They just are coming. And then they get more into the word right. and they learn more. She is right. What I have found out, God will have mercy on his children. He does. Because right. he's looking at their heart. That's what I was saying. You might as well just but tell the truth. Suppose you prayed that prayer and he healed you. Right. And you start doing the same thing that brought that illness on you. You make it worse, like you told the man, that something worse going to come on. And then you pray that prayer again, there's no guarantee that it will work. But you know what? One good thing about the Holy Spirit, he'll tell you sometimes, you'll be praying. And he'll say, you might as well just get up. Because what you're praying for and asking for has already been done for you. Here's what you got to have. He'll, he'll tell you what's going on. Most people do go to worship service. Not everybody goes to Sunday school or prayer meeting or Bible study. But in worship service, if the preacher is preaching, you got me? The preacher is preaching, and he's telling you to repent and believe the gospel. Believe what God has done for you. 
Believe that he has died for your sins. Believe that by his stripes you will have been healed. Okay. Believe that the chastisement of his peace he has took on, on himself so that you can have peace. I mean, the preacher is preaching this. And you receive it. That's enough right there to get you healed. It is. Without even going to Bible study. Because you believe what he was saying. But what has happened so many times in worship service, it has been false doctrine preached. That's true. We just read about that. <laughs> we just read about that. Right, because they don't tell the truth. They don't tell the whole truth. No. They tell enough to persuade you to do what they want you to do in church. They're not telling you the whole truth. That's why I'm taking my time now when I'm teaching this faith class or any other class is to let you see the scriptures, what they right. say. What Not what I'm saying, but what God is saying. Right. And God is saying that you got to be fully persuaded, have confidence in his word. In his word. And, and Romans 12, 2 says you have to renew your mind. Right. You have to do something. Right. So that you might know what the will of God is. Right. What the truth is. And the way you find out the will of God, you start doing things. And this is how you find out about your inner voice, too. That if God told you to do something, and you know it in your heart you're supposed to be doing it, and you start reasoning it out, well, God is merciful. He knows I'm, I, I'm, I'm weak in this area. He knows, you know, that, that is really my weak area. But you go ahead and do it. And then you say, Lord, forgive me for my sins. I, I sinned against you. So your next prayer should be, I'm willing to do your will, O Lord. I'm weak. Help me. Amen. Right. If you're willing to do his will, he can help you in whatever area that you want deliverance from or, or whatever's going on in your life holding you back, your, you know, your, mind, your mind, you're reasoning it out. But when you start reasoning out stuff, this came from something I heard this morning in my spirit. It told me, if you have to reason out something that I told you to do, you're not doing the will of God. Because I told you what to do. And if you're reasoning out that you want to do something different, that's you. That ain't, that ain't my will for your life. But like I said, if you ask God enough for something, he'll give it to you anyway. Because in the Old Testament, they wanted a king. And it wasn't God's will for them to have a king. Amen. Sure was. But God gave them a king anyway. But I want the best in my life. I, I want to be in God's complete will for my life. I don't want to pray a prayer, not my, not my will, but your will be done, because I want to know what the will of God is. The will of God is for me to listen to that inner voice in me and be completely led by the Spirit of God. In order to be completely led by the Spirit of God, I have to read the Scriptures. Amen. I have to read the Scriptures five days a week, Every week, and I have to pray in order to really hear that inner voice because it says the Holy Spirit is our helper. Yes, He is. He will bring stuff to remembrance, Amen. He will also guide you into Amen. all truth. Amen. He's an intercessor, He's a strengthener, He's a counselor, yes, he is. He's a comforter. And while he's doing all that, you start really seeing who Jesus is. Yes, we do. And what Jesus has done.
for us and is doing for us now. He is interceding for us in heaven right now. He went ahead of us to prepare a place for us. That where he is, we can be also. It's all about Jesus. That's what I'm finding out. If I'm doing something or asking for something and Jesus is not in it, you might want to ask yourself, what would Jesus do? You do have to do that. I, that's what I do. Yes. Here's how Jesus prayed. Go to John 11 chapter. Jesus didn't pray like he did in Luke. In John 11 chapter. Amen. Tell it, Brother Smith. No, Brother Ford. Get up, Brother Ford. You say, tell it. Tell it, tell it. Here's how Jesus prayed. In John 11. This is when um, Lazarus had died. First he was sick. And uh, they sent for Jesus, but he didn't come right away. It took him about four days before he came. And Lazarus had died. And here's the way he prayed, starting at uh, 40 at first. Read 40 to 44. This is how Jesus prayed. Jesus said to her, Did I not say to you that if you believe in me, you will see the glory of God, the expression of his excellence? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes toward heaven and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. What, wait a minute. He said, I thank you that you have heard yes, me. Yes, he was thanking them already. Go ahead. I knew that you always hear me and listen to me. Hmm. But I have said this because of the people standing around. So they may believe that you sent me and that you have made me your representative. When he had said this, he shouted with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! And out came the man who had been beat, his hands and feet tightly wrapped in burial cloths, linen strips, and with a burial cloth wrapped around his face. Jesus said to them, Unwrap him and release him. So now, that's praying the will of God. Amen. He didn't say, not my will, but your will no, be done. He didn't say that at all. Because if he had it, it wouldn't have happened. No. Because he wouldn't have been praying in faith. Not in faith. He said, I know that you hear me. I know, and he thanked him for this. I thank you for hearing me. Yeah. That's what he said. Yeah. He said, um, I thank you, and that you heard me. Woo. And I, I knew that you always hear me and listen to me. But I have said this hmm. because of the people standing around so that they may believe that you sent me and that you have made me your representative. That's how confidence he was sure. He was sure. He knew it. He was fully persuaded. That what he said was the will of God. And he said he always, always hear. He knew it. And listen. That Lazarus was going to come out. Amen. He was going to be raised from the dead even after four days. He Amen. was, he was dead. Good and dead. Wrapped up. <laughs> Bound it up. He shouted it. He had to call his name because if he hadn't called his name, everybody in there would have came out. Right. <laughs> he specifically said, Lazarus, come out. Mm -hmm. And the people were looking at 45. That's how God wants yeah. us to pray in his will. Right. In order to pray God's will, you gotta know what the will of God is. To learn what the will of God is, you got the Romans. Let's go back to Romans. I don't want to call it Romans 12 too. 
in order to know what the will of God is, you got to you got to really. He tells you to do something here to know what the will of God is, and we have to follow. This is our textbook. This is our standard. This is what God has said for us to do in order for things to happen. He said, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs. That's what you got to do first. And not be conformed with what they're saying or doing in this world. And then he says, hmm. But be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. That means you have to do it. You are the one that has to do it. Right. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is. That which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and perfect purpose for you. And all you want to know that is you. You got to let the world alone. That's what it said in First John, the world is fading away. So if you keep going by what they're saying, you're not going to be knowing what the perfect will of God is. You got to get in this word and you got to meditate on it day and night. Or you'll be the hand. Amen. We're going to stop right there. I hope that helped you. It sure helped me. I went over this this morning and it lifted me up. Because God talks to me all the time. Just like he talks to everybody in this class. And if you do what he say do, the Holy Spirit is just here to help you. He's a helper. He's a strengthener. And the Holy Spirit don't talk about himself. No. He tells you that Jesus has already did it. Jesus has died for your sins. He has, by his stripes, you are healed. He, he took all that chastisement of his, of our, you know, our, 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 our middle anguish he took upon himself so that we could have peace. So there's no way that we should be walking around here crazy and delirious. Amen. Because we should be walking in peace. Amen. We should be healed. We shouldn't be worried about the coronavirus, how many people have contacted mm -hmm. it, and how many Amen. people are dying. Amen. Because we're in the will of God. We're in the secret place of the Most High. That's in Psalm 91. We're in the secret place. Yes, we are. And we know the Lord is my shepherd. That's right. I shall not want. Amen. Because we know what his will is for right. our life. Right. And it tells us in Mark, if we drink any deadly thing, it will not hurt us. Amen. That is his will for us. Will. Amen. Praise God. Can you close us in prayer, Sister Carter? Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, we thank you. <laughs> yes, we thank you. We thank you for your holy word that you have given us this day. Uh, that's going to stay with us throughout our life to lead us and encourage us and, and walk in the way you would have us to do and uh, uh, being in your will, Heavenly Father. Because our will should be your will. Lord, you were just full of love and mercy and, and kindness to us and we thank you again for your holy word to, to strengthen us and encourage us and to do and be what you would want us to be in serving your purpose for our purpose, Lord. And we thank you for the listeners that are here in the class with us today and for all those that are listening on the internet. Lord, we ask you to continue to bless them because you are blessing us. Uh, we have so many blessings, we can't even thank you for all the blessings. And Lord, we just uh, ask you to Continue to help us get the word out to the people. And those that are listening, Lord, help them to get the word out to those that are around them. Lord, we know we're not ever alone. You're always with us, always uh, 
holiness and keeping us ever so near. And Lord, those who are sick out there, let them know they don't have to be sick. They just need healing. Receive their healing. Thank you for their healing. And just uh, receive the Holy Spirit. Many of them have the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father. Please let them know they need to be led by your Holy Spirit. So they can live the kind of life you would have them to live. And Lord, I thank you again for all our children, our families, and loved ones, and for all the blessings you have bestowed on us. We thank you for creating in us a clean heart and renewing our mind and transforming our spirit into the spirit of God. And we thank you with all our heart. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. To become a partner to help us get the word of God out to the world, go to thechurchcleveland.org. Thank you for viewing.